Today I'd like to talk about how geothermal energy might become an even bigger power source than solar and wind over the next decade, thanks to recent advancements as we dig deep into energy generation on Future Unfolded. In 2022, the United States generated a whopping 4,243 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. Where did it all come from? The majority, about 60.2%, was from fossil fuels, our old friends that have powered our homes and industries for generations. But they also contribute to greenhouse gases, an environmental concern we all share. Nuclear energy, a reliable old workhorse, chipped in 18.2%. But today our spotlight is on the rising stars of the energy world, renewables. Renewable energy, the clean, green, eco-friendly alternative, accounted for 21.5% of our electricity. More than a fifth of our power was generated by the wind, sun, water, and biomass. And the exciting part? This sector is growing at a faster pace than any other. Wind and solar are the poster children of this renewable revolution. Wind power alone provided over 10% of our total electricity, and solar added another 3.4%. But there's more to this than just the numbers. Worldwide, solar power generation has been doubling every three years, from 104 gigawatts in 2012 to a staggering 849 gigawatts in 2021. Each gigawatt generated by the wind and sun means one less gigawatt reliant on burning fossil fuels. It's a gigawatt that doesn't add to our greenhouse gas emissions. But solar has its limitations. It can't generate power at night. Enter another renewable energy source that doesn't rest, geothermal power. While it only contributed a smaller share of just 0.4% in 2022, its potential is enormous because it can generate power around the clock. This rapid growth in renewable energy isn't just a statistic. It's a beacon of hope. It's proof that we can revolutionize our energy systems, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, and combat climate change. The advancements in renewables, including the untapped potential of geothermal energy, present exciting opportunities for a cleaner, greener future. Now let's take a moment to understand one of the traditional power sources, coal. Despite the growth of renewables, coal still accounted for 19.5% of the US electricity generation in 2022. But how does a coal power plant work? Let's delve into the details. At its core, a coal power plant is all about converting energy stored in coal into electricity that we can use. It's a bit like a high-tech, industrial-grade kettle, but instead of boiling water for tea, it's creating steam to turn a turbine. First, coal is brought to the power plant it's usually transported by train and stored until needed. Then, it's ground into a fine powder. This increases its surface area and allows it to burn more efficiently. The coal powder is then blown into a combustion chamber where it's ignited. The burning coal releases a huge amount of heat, which is used to boil water. This water is in pipes that are coiled around the boiler, so the heat from the burning coal turns the water into steam. This isn't just any steam though, it's superheated, high pressure steam which is necessary to turn the blades of a turbine. And that's where the magic really happens. The high pressure steam is directed at the blades of a turbine, causing it to spin. This turbine is connected to a generator, and as the turbine spins, it turns the generator, and voila, we have electricity. The steam, having done its job, is then cooled down in a condenser and turned back into water, where it can be heated again and turned back into steam. This is known as the Rankine cycle, and is a loop that keeps the process efficient. Nuclear power is also a fascinating source of energy, one that has a lot of potential benefits. It provided 18.2% of the US electricity generation in 2022, making it a significant player in the energy sector. One of the greatest advantages of nuclear power is its reliability. Unlike solar or wind, it doesn't depend on the weather or time of day. Nuclear power plants can run uninterrupted for up to two years before they need to stop for refueling. This makes them an excellent source of baseload power, the minimum level of electricity demand over 24 hours. Nuclear power is also extremely efficient. A small amount of nuclear fuel can produce vast amounts of energy. This efficiency translates into less fuel extraction, transportation, and waste compared to fossil fuels. In terms of direct pollution and greenhouse gas emissions, nuclear power plants are far cleaner than coal and gas power plants. They don't burn fuel, so they don't produce harmful air pollutants associated with burning fossil fuels. And while they do produce waste, it's not in the form of greenhouse gases. Instead, it's radioactive waste, which is carefully managed and stored. Inside the reactor, uranium or plutonium fuel rods 
are arranged in such a way that when the nucleus of one atom is split and releases neutrons, these neutrons then cause other atoms to split, creating a chain reaction. As this chain reaction occurs, it releases a tremendous amount of heat. This heat is used to heat water, turning it into steam. This process is similar to what happens in a coal power plant, but instead of burning coal to generate the heat, it comes from the nuclear fission process. The steam is then used to spin a turbine, which is connected to a generator. As the turbine spins, it produces electricity, and then the steam is then cooled, condensed back into water, and returned to the reactor to be heated again, completing the cycle. Despite these benefits, nuclear power does come with its challenges, the most significant of which is the time it takes to build a nuclear power plant. It can take up to a decade, sometimes longer, to plan, approve, and construct a new plant. This includes the time for rigorous safety checks, public consultations, and logistical preparations. Given the urgent need to address our ecological and energy crises, this time frame presents a challenge. While nuclear power could undoubtedly be part of our long-term energy strategy, it can not provide the quick fix we need to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In addition, the cost of building new nuclear power plants is high, and the issue of long-term radioactive waste storage remains a complex problem to solve. So while nuclear power is indeed great and reliable, it's not a silver bullet solution. We need a diverse mix of renewable energy sources alongside energy efficient measures to truly meet our climate goals in a timely manner. Geothermal energy taps into the Earth's internal heat. This heat comes from the original formation of the planet, as well as from radioactive decay of materials. It's a clean, renewable resource that provides energy in the US and around the world. In a geothermal power plant, wells are drilled deep into the ground to access hot water or steam reservoirs. There are three main types of geothermal power plants, dry steam, flash steam, and binary cycle. Dry steam plants take the steam out of fractures in the ground and use it to directly drive a turbine that spins a generator. Flash steam plants take high pressure water from deep inside the earth and convert it to steam to drive the generator turbines. When the steam cools off, it condenses to water and is injected back into the ground to be used over and over again. Binary cycle power plants transfer the heat from geothermal hot water to another liquid. The heat causes the second liquid to turn into steam, which is then used to drive a generator turbine. The advantage of this process is that geothermal water is never exposed to the atmosphere. One of the significant advantages to geothermal energy is its consistency. Like nuclear power, geothermal energy is always available 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. It is also a green energy source. Though geothermal plants can release small amounts of greenhouse gases trapped deep within the earth, these emissions are much lower per energy unit than those of fossil fuels and the water and heat are continually replenished by the natural process, so it's sustainable on a human timescale. One of the most recent and significant geothermal energy projects is located in Swan Hills, Alberta, Canada, which is run by Razor Energy Corp and Futera Power Corp. This project has successfully constructed, commissioned, and is currently operating a co-produced geothermal project that utilizes both an organic ranking cycle orc turbine and a natural gas turbine, both of which are connected to the Alberta electricity grid. The final construction cost for the project was estimated to be around $49 million. What makes this project particularly successful and unique is that it was designed to capitalize on existing infrastructure and resources from oil and gas operations in Alberta. They have leveraged the existing infrastructure, reservoir characteristics, wells, and operational footprints to create a geothermal natural gas hybrid power plant. Large volumes of hot production fluids which carry heat as a renewable form of geothermal energy are produced and injected daily as part of their ongoing conventional oil and gas operations. This provides the opportunity to capture geothermal heat energy and generate power with zero greenhouse gas emissions. Furthermore, the project has set a standard for how traditional oil and gas companies can evolve into energy and technology companies, and they are currently planning to add solar energy and potential carbon capture into the mix, with the objective to create a net negative carbon emitting traditional oil and gas asset. They are already designing a second co-produced geothermal power project slated for construction starting in the next year. And that's really my point for today's video. I feel like traditional power generation could be switched over to a geothermal heat source if the cost was right. But let's delve into why geothermal energy isn't as widespread as it could be. Geothermal energy, despite its many benefits, faces several challenges that have limited its widespread adoption. 
Firstly, geothermal power generation is typically considered location-specific. Geothermal energy requires specific geological conditions, namely hot rocks at a depth that is technologically accessible, and sufficient water to produce steam. These conditions are most often found in regions known as geothermal hotspots such as Iceland, parts of the United States like California and Nevada, New Zealand, and the Philippines. Secondly, the initial costs of geothermal energy can be quite high. These costs include the exploration of geothermal resources, drilling of wells, and construction of power plants. Drilling is a significant portion of these costs, and it carries a risk of not finding a resource hot enough to exploit, and until recently, it took years to drill deep enough. For example, the deepest hole that's been drilled to date is the Kola borehole, which is 7.6 miles, or just under 12 and a quarter kilometers deep, and it took 20 years to complete because the conventional drill bits broke constantly nearing that depth. Thankfully, we don't need to continue using traditional drilling to get to three miles or five kilometers underground. We can use faster, cheaper technology like millimeter wave drilling. It's a technology that uses high frequency radio waves to heat rock and break it down, allowing for drilling and extraction processes. It is especially suited to geothermal energy generation because it can access hot rock formations deep beneath the Earth's surface where traditional drilling methods may struggle. One of the world's first commercial geothermal power plants using millimeter wave drilling technology is being established in Japan, which will have a capacity of 15 megawatts and is expected to begin operations in 2024. The use of millimeter wave drilling technology is expected to significantly reduce the cost associated with geothermal power generation. It is estimated that the cost of electricity from geothermal sources using millimeter wave drilling could be as low as 12 cents per kilowatt hour, making it very competitive with traditional energy sources. The International Energy Agency has described millimeter wave drilling as a game changer that could herald a new era for geothermal energy, opening up vast new sources of clean, renewable energy. But wait, there's more. Deep Power, a Utah-based company, has been pioneering a significant enhancement in geothermal drilling technology. This technology, currently patent pending, has shown promising results in rate of penetration modeling performed by the University of Oklahoma. The studies indicate a potential 600% increase in drilling rate compared to conventional geothermal drilling methods, and a 300% increase compared to the competing millimeter wave drilling technology. This drastic increase in drilling rate could help make geothermal energy more economically viable, potentially reducing the cost of drilling a geothermal well by over $30 million. However, Deep Power Solution doesn't just promise faster drilling. The company aims to reach deeper into the Earth's crust, specifically targeting a zone known as Super Hot Rock. This zone, approximately 6 miles or 10 kilometers deep, and with temperatures around 750 degrees Fahrenheit or 400 degrees Celsius, is touted as the holy grail of geothermal energy due to its potential to extract 10 times more heat energy than more shallow wells. Current conventional geothermal drilling equipment can only reach depths where the temperature is around 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. Deep Power's technology is being developed to overcome this limitation and drill deep into super hot rock. The technology is currently at a stage where a lab scale prototype is being planned, and the company is confident about the real world applications for this technology. Deep Power has an exclusive option to license all resulting technology from this research project for commercialization, indicating a promising future for this innovative technology. The goal of Deep Power is to tap into the Earth's unlimited source of a green geothermal energy by developing a suite of advanced low-cost, high-temperature, and high-pressure drilling systems. Deep Power aims to transform the geothermal industry. The company projects that a 9-inch hole drilled 5 miles or 8 kilometers deep could produce the same amount of power as 320 acres of solar panels, providing a significant advantage over other renewable energy sources in terms of land usage. A geothermal well can be built close to existing power plants, requiring minimal or no additional land use, while solar requires a significant amount of land to match the same amount of energy a power plant produces, says Kevin Bonebreak, CFO of Quays Energy. So while not all power plants using fossil fuels are ideally located to be converted to geothermal power, with thousands of coal power plants around the world, this is still a massive opportunity. Thanks to these recent advancements in drilling, we could soon see a fast transition to stop burning coal and start using steam generated by the heat of our planet to create clean and renewable energy. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me grow this channel, which helps me continue creating content like this. Thanks for watching.